What's up, Greg? I hope you're having a great holiday season. I know I was until I watched the new Home Alone movie and I got sick also. I think the movie might have given it to me, honestly. You know, guys, when you think about it, I guess it makes a lot of sense that they would make a new Home Alone movie, you know? Hollywood loves their sequels, their sequels of sequels, and they've already made like five Home Alone movies, so why stop there? And sure, like nobody has watched or even been interested in the last like three, but all the more reason to make another one, you know? Sort of a comeback Home Alone movie this could be. I guess could, could have been if it wasn't already out and wasn't already bad. It's a shame, man. I really liked the first two Home Alone movies, but then after that, they just, nothing feels the same. And I don't know what it is about this one in particular, but watching this little kid beat the shit out of these burglars, it's just not as fun as it used to be. I guess I really am grown up. Oh, no, you know what it is actually? It's not that I'm grown up. It's that instead of making the villains in this movie like cartoonishly evil burglars, they made them like a struggling middle class family who are only breaking into this kid's house due to a misunderstanding. They're not evil. They're not trying to hurt anyone or kill anyone. They're just like a down on their luck family. And this rich kid is just Fucking him up at every turn, dude. This movie is insane. You know how a Home Alone movie goes. There's a kid, he gets left in his house by himself. There's robbers who try to break in and the kid set, sets up a bunch of traps to try to hurt them and embarrass them. And that's exactly what happens in this movie. So you're probably wondering who are these robbers and why do they want to break into this kid's house so bad? So let me tell you. Pam and Jeff McKenzie are parents. They live in the same area as the main kid, Max. And the movie starts off with them having an open house. They're trying to sell their house because they're both down on their luck. One of them doesn't make very much money and the other has just lost his job. And so they're trying to sell their house to keep food on the table for their families. It's very sad. The movie sort of tries to make it into like a funny thing happening. There's like millennials that come to try to buy the house wearing berets and scarves. You know how like millennials do. Always wearing berets and scarves, I am. The schools here are amazing. They are totally lit. And there's a lot of scenes like this in the movie that uh, seem like they're trying to get you to empathize with these this couple. In this scene, they're just talking about how they can't afford to live in this house anymore. Even though they love this house and they always thought that they'd be growing old together in the house. Unfortunately, it just won't be able to become a reality for them. I always thought we'd get old and weird in this house, but we've done the math. We can't afford it on my salary alone. Yeah, but I mean, I crushed my interview with IBM. Crushed it. Crushed it. But that was three months ago. It's, it's very sad. And <laughs> when I watched this, I didn't know that these two were going to be the ones who were gonna have all of the booby traps happen to them. And it's kind of crazy now watching it back being like, holy shit, just about an hour and a half from now, these two are gonna be getting maimed by a rich child. <laughs> How fucked up is that? So what's their motivation to rob this kid, you might ask? Well, it's sort of, the, I feel like everything in this movie is so long and convoluted to explain. Probably because they've done this same movie like six times now. And so they keep having to come up with like new, more obscure ways to explain everything. Like how does the kid get left home alone? And why why are burglars trying to get into his house? Basically there's this doll that the McKinsey's own. Uh, they have a whole collection of these dolls that were like his grandma's or something. And they find out that they're, one of them is worth like $200,000, which is enough money for them to like save their house and have enough time for the husband to find a new job. And they, they can even remodel the whole house. It's great. But during their open house, house, Max and his mom, who are rich, by the way, they live in a mansion, stop at their open house because Max has to pee. Do the maths. Six soda refills into one tiny 10 year old's bladder does not go. I'm, ugh. They sort of are using this uh, less wealthy family's house as a public restroom of sorts. And the McKenzie's talk to Max about this doll and that's actually how they learn how valuable the dolls are is because Max's mom knows this information. There was this elderly lady who bought one at a garage sale for about $10 and then it ended up going for about 5,000. And then the doll goes missing. That brat kid stole my doll. And so the McKenzie's assume that Max stole the doll from them. So they are breaking into his house to try to get the doll back so that they can save their family. Which is not a decision that they take lightly, mind you. They're not like stoked to do this. They're like a normal family just like anybody else, but this is like the only thing they can do to try to keep their family afloat. They're actually like extremely nervous about doing this because they don't want to get caught and they don't want to hurt anybody. Little do they know they will get caught and they will get hurt. So yeah, in various ways, this movie goes out of its way to show you how nice of people the McKinsey's are, how much they don't want to break into this house, but how they're like left no other option. It's like, it's, it's honestly 
you gotta kind of respect it in a way. They're like, look how these people, they're so nice, they're so sweet, wouldn't hurt a fly, they just really want to keep their family well fed and in a nice house. Um, we're gonna fuck with them. We're gonna fuck with them hard, dude. This is like an evil Mr. Beast video. So at first only Jeff is on board, but then this scene happens. And this is what finally gets Pam on board to help out with the robbery as well. You gotta save our house. Seriously, mom, will you just get the doll? It's just entering, Pam. We have the key. Pam, you have to call me. Huh? Come and get me. No, Fraulein. No. I will, you ugly little boy. Weirdly inspirational music as, as this woman is having a full meltdown. She's like hallucinating. This is the moment she's realizing she has to do something that is like deeply against her morals just to put food on the table for her family. And the music is just kind of this like inspirational Christmas song. Does not seem like the right tone, but okay. So now you may be wondering since I brought it up, how does Max <coughs> so now you may be wondering how Max gets left home alone. They've done this movie a million times. How can they possibly come up with new ways for a child to be left home alone from a family vacation? Well, the short answer is they basically just, they, everything is so confusing that they just leave him home. It's confusing for them and it's confusing for us as the audience. They're going on vacation to Japan with a bunch of extended family. So they've got a bunch of families staying at their house. It's very chaotic, it's very hectic. The whole beginning of the movie is just them like rapid fire introducing a bunch of characters that we literally never see again. In all this confusion, the families get split onto two different flights to go to Japan. You have split our family onto two separate flights. Can you speak up please? It's very loud in here. And so they can't really keep track very well of who's on which flight. Now as for how he actually gets left at home, Max is sort of a Scrooge of a child. While Max has like all of his cousins over playing, they're all running through the halls, playing video games, shooting Nerf guns at each other. Max, I guess, is like overwhelmed by all of this and goes to hide in his family's BMW. like a random car commercial at the beginning of the movie. He, he leaves the, the ruckus of his house on the holidays to go sit in the garage in his family's BMW and watch cartoons. Dad? Seems like a weird way to advertise BMWs, honestly. I'm not sure about that product placement. BMW for rich recluses who hate their families. Get left home alone while your family goes to Japan because you were watching Looney Tunes in your car. BMW. This kid is a weird one, man. I don't, he's like 80 years old or something. He lives in a huge ass house. He's got a bunch of cousins. He's got a million toys probably. Seems pretty fun to me. But instead he's like, get all this, get all this fun out of my house. I hate Christmas. I'm gonna go hide in my, my luxury car and pass out for 12 hours. There are a lot of choices in this movie that make very little sense and I'm still trying to figure out why they would do these things. This movie looks like weirdly cheap while also having a ton of big celebrities in it. People, I, even I was surprised to see, even after watching a trailer, like Kenan Thompson, Pete Holmes, Ellie Kemper. They have like a ton of big names in this movie and some of them with like really weirdly small, insignificant parts. Chris Parnell, for example, plays Uncle Stu in this movie who we see once at the beginning. And then for the rest of the movie, he's shitting. Did Carol leave? Travel safe. What, what's going on? He's shitting even before we see him too. I told you to use the restroom in the coffee shop, darling. After Uncle Stu had been in there? Really? Did you see how many deviled eggs he had for lunch? And then for the rest of the movie, we only hear him through the door of the bathroom. Did somebody call the house? No, because we don't have a landline, Stu. Because he gets to Tokyo and then I guess had more bad food and is still shitting. Actually, that... That might be one of the funniest parts of the movie, honestly. The fact that this uncle is just pooping his brains out the entire time. That is... That is pretty funny. <laughs> and the fact that they got such like a big name to play him and we're paying you $5 million for this role and you're gonna be behind a door pooping your brains out and we're never gonna see you, is that cool? Also, Mikey Day from SNL is a priest in this movie. If you didn't look very hard, you might not even know there was a priest in this movie, let alone the fact that he was played by someone famous. If this movie was good, it would have been cool to see so many famous actors, but because it was really underwhelming, it was almost disappointing every time a new actor popped up that I recognized. I was like, oh, not you too, man. What's going on? Are you okay? Another weird choice, they threw in this line in the middle of the movie about remakes always being worse than the original. Oh, this is garbage. I don't know why they're always trying to remake the classics. 
Never as good as the original. Like, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> it was like the studio being like, we know this isn't as good as the first one. But you're still gonna eat this shit up, aren't you, little piggy? Mmm, Lil Piggy likes his Home Alone movies, doesn't he? And I did eat this shit up, alright? So, I can't really- I can't talk, I watched it still. I feel like, with a kids movie like this, you always have to appeal to the kids, but then also throw in some- some good stuff for the adults in there too, and make it fulfilling for them to watch. That way they'll wanna, you know, throw it on with the kids every year, right? And this movie works well enough for kids, I think. I think kids just like to watch Max make the booby traps and think, hmm, I could do that if I was like, home alone and there are people trying to rob me. I could defend myself against two adults who are trying to kidnap me. It's fun to imagine yourself as a smart little six-year-old, even if you are a dumb little six-year-old. But this movie, while being fun for kids, I would say is deeply saddening for adults. The second half of this movie is just watching a struggling family getting their shit rocked by a rich asshole kid. Bombs away! We just had a He's just not a cool, fun kid. He's a rich asshole who tries to steal from church at one point. <laughs> I'm definitely a child of need. Need of this. Can I help you? Even if Max was a likable child, we probably wouldn't even know because we like spend hardly any time getting to know him. And the time that we do spend getting to know him, he's not very likable. When he first gets left home alone, you know, in the movies, that's like their chance to do everything they've ever wanted to do in the house. But like all Max wanted to do, I guess, was like play video games and Hot Wheels and then like watch porn. <laughs> We'll play oh, mom and dad. Was he trying to look at porn? We will never know. But I have to assume that that's what they wanted us to think, right? Actually, after watching this movie, I wouldn't be surprised to find out it was something like super violent. Working family gets a beating compilation. <laughs> no one can stop my violent urges now. Damn it. Also, during the big heist when the, the Mackenzies come to rob Max, he doesn't act like a kid who thinks he's going to be kidnapped should act. He acts... Creepy. What a kid should do, even if he set up booby traps, he should set all those up and then find a place to hide, right? Like get in a box under a box in the basement and just hide there. But not Max, dude. He is sick. Every time the mom gets like thrown across the room or a few teeth knocked out, he's always like right around the corner giggling. He's been waiting for an excuse to do this, for sure. He has been planning this for longer than... Longer than it seems, I think. Speaking of which, let's talk about the traps. I think the traps in this movie might be pretty on par with the other Home Alone movies, with the exception of a few particularly grotesque ones. One, 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 two. <laughs> and also the, uh, I think the makeup artist for this movie thought they were doing makeup for a horror movie. At one point, Jeff gets shot in the head with a pool ball, because Max has sort of like a gun that shoots out pool balls, which I think... I do think would kill someone, but Jeff is just kind of walking around the rest of the scene with like a giant ass bump on his head. It is horrific. Why is he doing this to us, Pam? At one point, Pam, sweet Pam, is lit on fire. Okay. <laughs> this poor mother is set ablaze. She, she runs to the hose to try to put out the fire and it sprays her. And then she, for the rest of the movie, she looks insane, dude. At one point it shows her feet as she's stepping on Legos, her bare feet, and her feet are burnt to a crisp. And the whole time I'm trying to think, what were the writers thinking during this part? You know what, man, this is gonna be even funnier because, uh, because they probably don't have health insurance. So this is probably gonna be even worse for them financially than it is physically. <laughs> this couple have had the worst week of their life, man. And then they just get beaten up. There's a point where after the mom gets lit on fire, she just lays down in the snow and cries. <gasps> Am I supposed to be laughing right now? This is so sad. The worst booby trap of the whole movie, and probably any Home Alone movie, I feel like has gotta be this one. It is so grotesque. It is honestly scary. This is some horror movie shit right here, okay? Pam thinks that Max has just run up into the attic, so she goes to pull down, like, the ladder that leads to the attic, and instead she's greeted with a Nerf gun that shoots out Nerf darts with push pins sticking out the front. <laughs> For 
the rest of the entire booby trap montage, she just has these pushpin nerf darts sticking out of her face and hands and everywhere. It is so scary. It is nasty. This is this movie is foul. And I gotta be honest, the whole time, I was not rooting for the kid at all. I was rooting for the the couple. I'm not sure if that's how it was supposed to be, but it was not very satisfying, I will say, if it was. I, maybe maybe this was the Home Alone movie where they tried to flip it all on their head and be like, let's root for the robbers this time, but we still watched them get their asses handed to them, so I would, I would say that it was, was not very fun. I, I especially wasn't rooting for Max the first time I watched this because we're all led to believe that he did steal their doll, their $200,000 doll. It turns out at the end of the movie that he actually didn't steal their doll, and it was all a big misunderstanding. I I guess the whole thing could have been avoided if they just had just kind of talked it out. But Jeff's nephew had stolen it, I guess. Kind of a weird thing to reveal at the end because it really makes you, it really makes you hate Max because you're like, this kid stole from church. He also stole this extremely valuable doll from this struggling family. What the hell? I hate this kid. Anyway, that's uh, that, that's pretty much the end of the movie. They get the doll back and they sell it and then they can live in their house happily ever after. And yeah, that's the end of the movie. Now it's time to talk about our sponsor, ExpressVPN. This video has been sponsored by ExpressVPN. Guys, if you're using the internet without ExpressVPN on your computer or your phone, you're missing out. You're not getting the full experience because ExpressVPN unlocks so many possibilities while keeping you safe. Because while ExpressVPN sends all of your data through a secure encrypted tunnel, keeping your data safe from like hackers and your ISP and advertisers, it can also help you unlock a bunch of content that you didn't even know was there. For example, did you know that some Netflix libraries and other countries have nearly twice as many Oscar award-winning titles than in the US? So just saying, if you download ExpressVPN and change your server location to a different country, your Netflix is gonna be crazy. I have ExpressVPN on pretty much every device I own that can have ExpressVPN. I've got it on my laptop, I've got it on my phone, and I've used it to watch many a Netflix title that are not available in the US. Harry Potter, for example? You bet your boys watched it on Netflix. I'd like to see you try to do that. No, really, I would like to see you try to do I would like to see you go to expressvpn.com slash Danny Gonzalez and try to do that right now. Go ahead. Like I said, ExpressVPN also protects you from your internet service provider snooping on you and basically getting to log all your data. But when you encrypt your data and reroute it through ExpressVPN servers, that makes it so they can't do that. Think about it like this. Would you rather trust ExpressVPN, a company who is explicitly trying to protect you, or would you rather just send it through the pipes? Send it through the pipes of the internet service provider that you had no choice but to sign up with because they were the only one in your neighborhood and so you just had to sign up with them. Who knows what they could be doing? You don't. They're legally allowed to sell your data to other people, so they are doing. They could be doing anything with that stuff. So if you want to check out ExpressVPN and support my channel, then head on over to expressvpn.com slash Danny Gonzalez to find out how you can get three months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash Danny Gonzalez. The link will be in the description. Go ahead and click that to find out how you can get three months for free. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and thank you to you guys for checking out ExpressVPN. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. Sorry if it was a little short. I am ill and I had to take uh, breaks periodically throughout this video to have a coughing fit. So, uh, but I'll be back. Um, probably won't post another video until the new year, but I'll see you guys in 2022. Thank you guys for another year of your support. I, I greatly appreciate it. And I want to kiss you and bye-bye.